How you doing there folks? Baiters here with another video for you all. Today we're going to look at 50 secret tips and tricks for Call of Duty Warzone. Now hopefully most of these things will be new to you guys. But if you know something on this list, maybe just pump the brakes in the strongly worded letter, okay? As hopefully there's lots you don't know on this list. Remember if you like this video to hit that like button. Because if I get enough likes on this video then maybe my kids will look me in the eyes again during dinner. There's no guarantees though. Now go ahead and softly blow in a stranger's earlobe and let's get to average baiting, baby! Yeah, that's right. It's important to pull your shoot early. Shooting early is normally an embarrassing situation, or so I'm told. I rarely ever shoot early unless somebody tickles my balls. In which case, I can't be responsible for my actions. However, in this case, you most definitely want to shoot early. That way, you'll be able to see where everyone's going in the game, and also, you'll be above them. And you'll make sure you're not in a precarious situation where people can shoot you from the air with their pistol like they watch too many Rambo movies. I also find it a good idea not to push forward until your shoot is pulled, so that you're above everyone else and you can look down on them like the insects that they are. Don't go up elevators or zip lines without cover. Elevators are all about convenience. They're actually one of the reasons lazy people don't need to get exercise, even if they live on the 19th floor. However, in Warzone, they're definitely something you're going to want to avoid. It can be convenient, yes, to get to a rooftop quickly, but when you do get to the top, you're going to be standing there with nothing but your dick in your hands as the animation has to play out before you can do anything else. Now, this gives eager beavers like myself the opportunity to punch you right in the taint before you have the ability to fight back. Game, set, match. All in all, it's just better to take the steps. Unless you're feeling rambunctious. You're going to want to use trophies on vehicles. Now, have you ever just been cruising along trying to impress the babes in your sick whip when all of a sudden someone blows your cheeks apart with a big old explosive? Yeah, it really puts a damper on your day getting blown to smithereens! So a good way to avoid that in Warzone is to put a trophy system on your vehicle. This will absorb explosives like it's childhood youth and you're one of those witches from Hocus Pocus just sucking the prepubescence right out of them. The trophy systems are almost a must if you want to use vehicles in Warzone. Trust me on this, I know from experience. Now speaking of spanking vehicles with explosives, C4s are definitely the go-to in terms of automobile destruction in Warzone. Rockets will sometimes disable vehicles rather than just blow them up, but that's just not the case with these little fuckers. Every vehicle except for the dump truck is a 1C4 fix in Warzone. And if you find yourself really needing to blow up that truck, then you just have to use two C4s and kaboom! Bye-bye Optimus Prime! <laughs> also, do be aware that if you blow up the truck, if there's anyone sitting in the back of the truck for whatever reason, they don't always get blown up. They'll just pop out and start beating the fuck out of you. It's insane. Bounties are like mini UAVs. Now, if you're not exactly in a contract, it can be a good idea to get bounties on the map. Not just because they make you feel like Dog the Bounty Hunter running around with your golden locks just flapping in the wind, but because they can be a great way to see at least one other team in the game like a mini UAV. Now sometimes those teams are close and you might not have otherwise known they were there, which then gives you the ability to exercise your Second Amendment right on their booty holes. Worst case, it just shows you where people are and you can continue to go about your business, letting them have a little panic attack for three minutes. Slide away from snipers. Now snipers are big old booty sniffers in Warzone and there will be a fair number of people who just finished watching American Sniper and have a big old Bradley Cooper boner just pulsating for people running out in the open. So be sure when you're moving in Warzone, especially out in the open, to be unpredictable. I also find that sliding is a lot harder to hit in Warzone than jumping. So if you want to be evasive, try to use the slide. Also, don't just jump up and down. It's really easy to hit you when you do that shit. And then you're going to get bodied and you're going to be like, Oh my god, I don't understand what happened. Don't be that person. Get two loadouts for Ghost. 
Having more than one good gun in Warzone is kind of a must, especially when you're not sure where those pesky soy boys are going to pop up. Sometimes you'll need something close quarters, and sometimes you'll need something from a distance. The problem is, is that when you run overkill, you can't run Ghost at the same time. Ghost makes it so you don't show up on heartbeat sensors, UAVs, or what have you, whereas overkill allows you to carry two main guns. However, with all the UAVs, heartbeat sensors, and snitches giving up your position every two seconds, it's really important to have both. Well guys, when you're playing Warzone, you can have your cake and eat it too. As long as you got the funds. Yeah, that's right. That's what Activision teaches us. It teaches us that if we got money, we can have it all, right? And that's what's important here. That's the lesson you need to take away from this, kids, okay? Therefore, you're going to want to buy two loadouts. The first one will give you overkill, so you'll have both of your guns. And the second one, you can get ghosts, so people will have no idea what bush you're jerking off in. <laughs> it's a win-win! In most shooter games, silencers are a trade-off. Without them, your gun will show up on the minimap, and with them, you'll miss out on damage. I mean, so much so that it's like using a shitty diaper in terms of damage. Have you ever tried to beat someone to death with a dirty diaper? I have, and it's exhausting! Yes, it does a lot of psychological damage, but very little physical damage. However, Warzone and Modern Warfare do things differently in this regard. Silencers will actually increase the range of a weapon, meaning that they'll do more damage even at a further range. Also, your gun won't show up on the minimap when you pull the trigger. So you don't lose out on firepower, and you don't show up on the minimap. What's not to love? So if you got an open attachment slot on your weapon, it's a good idea to use a silencer. That way you don't wake up the neighbor's kids when you're letting off a few rounds in a fit of midnight rage. Or when you're fucking super high on cocaine. Change your minimap to the square minimap. The default minimap in Warzone is round, but we all know that the world is flat, and as such, it shouldn't have round maps. That's confusing to an adult with a grade 3 reading level. So switch the map from round to flat and alienate science in the process. The advantages here are simple. A square minimap shows more of the map, so you can see people popping off down the block like a boss. This will help you identify a threat sooner, so that you can possibly save yourself a change of underwear. Switch to Contextual Tab. Taking time to loot is not a good idea in a game where the objective is to not get killed. The last thing you want is to have two thumbs up your butthole looking for chump change while everyone else is running around with bazookas. It's just a really good idea to change the tap on controller settings to contextual tap. This way, everything is just one button tap away rather than holding down buttons like a potato person. Just hoping that no one's gonna body you from around the corner. Oh, open the box! Open the box! Open the fucking box! Just makes things faster. And in a game where speed matters, that's important. Turn on, always run. Now this one's a little controversial. Now some people like to always be ready to sprint their cheeks out of a dangerous situation. While other people like to let the Velociraptor catch up to them and their ill-prepared archaeologist friends. Point is, it's always a good thing to be able to move fast in a bind. And having always run on allows you to boogie in and out of situations fast and easy. However, the downside is blind firing shotguns and other weapons can be really difficult because you're always sort of running. So if you're the type of person that likes to use shotguns close quarters or other weapons and blind fire them quite a bit, then you might not want to have on the always run setting. However, if you're someone who likes to aim in on your weapons and move around really quickly, always run is definitely a setting you're going to want to turn on. Don't zoom too much with a sniper. When you zoom in with a sniper scope in Warzone or any scope over 3.5 magnification, you basically say, Hey everyone, look at me! I'm trying to get a kill like one of those big boys I watch on Twitch! This is not a good idea. This will send potential victims running indoors where they will turn off all the lights and hide in the bathroom. It will also make other predators take notice and try to murder your situation. Basically, it's best to scope things out without a sniper scope or something with 3.5 times magnification, and then use the sniper when you're ready to not only down somebody, but finish them off in front of their constituents, giving them a much needed dose of PTSD as they run through the hills screaming in terror. Use buildings and locations that actually give you an advantage. Now, some buildings and high rooftops only have one or two ways up. This is advantageous if you really want to shit on people. That way, you're able to make a lot of noise, and then when heroes come from their prospective orifices to slay you, you can camp the only way up like a true scuzzy fuck. That way, you'll be able to get the drop on them when they're climbing up a ladder or zipping up an elevator. 
Either way, they will likely yell all sorts of profanities into their headset as you contribute to their demise. Hide in a bush. Now, if you have ghosts and you don't want people to tickle your nipples, then it can be a good idea to hide in a bush. Now, certain operators will blend in nicely to the Bushwookie gameplay style, especially if they're wearing like a ghillie suit or something. This will make it very difficult for enemies to see you. In fact, there has been a few times when teams would come right up on me and put their taints right on the tip of my face and then run off. Being in a bush makes you almost invisible in the game. Don't believe me? Give it a shot. Scopes with under 3.25 have no glare. Letting everyone know where you are with a big bright twinkle every time you aim down your sights can be a real pain in the pussy. It gets to the point where you just want a little privacy when you're scoping out the terrain. So if you don't want that glint, then use scopes with a 3.25 zoom and under. Even if you have them on a sniper or marksman rifle, it won't show a glint. So you can be a very sneaky sniper. Or as I like to call them, an easy down. Yes, because it's really hard to snipe with those shitty scopes, but um, great for being sneaky. Great for being sneaky. Use a heartbeat sensor. Now the heart wants what the heart wants. Now heartbeat sensors are these great little devices that can detect anyone who is not a zombie as it picks up on people's heartbeats. Now don't ask me how the science works because that shit is like magic to me. Now heartbeat sensors are hugely helpful though in Warzone. The earlier you get them, the better as the only way to hide from a heartbeat sensor is with ghost or not having a heart. And we all know how hard it is to walk around without one of those puppies, right? <laughs> it's fucking, it's pretty difficult, I think. Some would argue impossible. The ghost perk will make it so you don't show up on heartbeat sensors, but aside from that, you will detect everyone. This will keep you one step ahead of people who don't have ghosts and give you the upper hand when you're gallivanting your cheeks to a new safe zone. Because as you're traveling throughout the world space, you can use the heartbeat sensor to see whether or not people are in houses or whether they're in front of you, behind you, around you, and so forth. It's just a great tool and one that's almost a necessity in Warzone. Don't waste armor. So the neat thing about Warzone is that you can get downed a million times and as long as you have a teammate with a Flintstone Band-Aid, then you can keep getting back up. However, if you decide that you wanna have a sniper battle with someone on rooftops or from a distance, and you think there is a chance you may get downed more than once, then don't waste your plates by putting them back in over and over and over again. Save them until you're ready to leave that spot or until you're in immediate danger. If they can't finish you off from that distance, it doesn't make sense to put your plates back on. It's just a waste of plates, and then when you have to leave, you're not gonna have any plates, and then someone's gonna come up and just scissor kick you right in the eyeball, and you're gonna go down like a sack of shit. Right? Because you got no plates. Don't drive cars without trophies. This one seems obvious, but driving cars in Warzone is one of the easiest ways to get killed. And for your whole team to get wiped. Not only that, but you will be visible to anyone in the general vicinity if you're driving a car. So it's in your best interest to avoid driving cars unless you absolutely need to and you have a trophy system. Otherwise, you'll just look like a dick squirrel bobbing around the map until someone blows your dumbass sky high. The number of loadouts will show how many people or enemies are in the general vicinity. Paying attention to the little details in the game can pay off. Like for instance, there are two free loadouts that will drop in the game if you make it all the way to the end. One will drop 15 seconds before the first circle changes, and the other will drop 15 seconds into the fifth circle. But more importantly, pay attention to the number of boxes that are being dropped because each box represents a team that's in the general vicinity. There will be your box, and then every other box will represent a different team. If your box drops by itself, then generally you're good to get some free shit. However, in contrast, if it drops with a bunch of other boxes, it's probably not a good idea to go get a free loadout. Also, another little detail, it's just like a free tip that I'll give you guys. If you notice someone on another team wearing a lot of bright clothing or sporting pink guns, the chances are you'll be able to run right in front of them and grab your loadout because they'll be too busy blowing other dudes to see you coming. It's little details like that that really make this game great. Finish downs right away. Listen, there is no reason to let people live after you down them in this game, unless you're some kind of sicko that likes to watch them bleed out. Best reason for killing people as soon as you down them is because of self-revives. Yep, that's right. People can pick themselves up in this game after they get shot in the fucking face. They just 
pull out a glue stick and pick up their brain matter and duct tape that shit back together and bam, good as new. Seriously though, people will get back up and snuff you out if you don't finish them right away. They might also tell their teammates where you are even if they don't have a self revive or live mark you for their teammates to see. Best way to stop this from happening is to finish them right away. Kill them as many times as you need to to make sure they don't come back. Follow them to another game if you need to. Kill them there. I don't give a fuck. Just make sure they're out of the mix. Okay? Okay. Best weapons are ubiquitous. Now, when you die a few times in Warzone, you'll start to notice some patterns will emerge. Like, for instance, you'll start to notice you'll see multiple people using the same gun. As you know, Activision is always updating the weapons. They're buffing some, nerfing others, whatever it is. So I can't give you the lowdown of what the best guns are at any given time. Those are going to change as the game evolves or devolves or whatever you want to call it. So the best way to find out what the best guns are at any given time is to notice what everyone is using. Now you might also notice that telling someone you'll suck on their elbows will not save you. But that's a story for another time. Truth is, Activision is always nerfing and buffing weapons in the game because 8-year-old kids complain to their overprotective PE teachers, and before you know it, someone gets a strongly worded letter on their desk. Fact is, guns change. This week the M4 might be the best assault rifle in the game. Then the next update, it's a butterfly knife. That's right, a fucking butterfly knife is OP as shit. Point is, the only way to keep up with the competition is to use the best equipment. And the best way to find out what the best equipment is, is to pay attention to what is eradicating your giblets. Won't take long for you to notice the best guns in the game at any given time. If you see a pattern evolve, then maybe it's time to switch your loadout. HDR is the best sniper. Now sniping is all about range. You want to be able to hit people as far away as possible without having to adjust for bullet drop. The best sniper to do this has always been the HDR. If you max out the range, then it hits faster and has less bullet drop than any other sniper or marksman rifle in the game. This is good because I'm a bit of a bitch and I like to shoot people in the back as they run for cover. But no, seriously, the HDR is able to shoot further and more precisely than any other sniper in the game. This means you won't have to lead shots or account for bullet drop as much as you would with other snipers or marksman rifles. Max out control on ARs. Each type of weapon has their own unique advantages in the game. Snipers are for distance, SMGs are all about the ADS, and ARs are all about control. You don't want your AR bouncing around like Jigglypuff on cocaine. So it's important to put your control up no matter what the AR you use in the game. This will keep your weapon from bobbing up and down like a cheap hooker who's desperate to pay her pimp on time. This will keep things calm, cool, and collective, which is as important as tits when you're in a mid-range gunfight. Max out the range on snipers. Now just because the HDR is the best sniper in the game doesn't mean it's the only sniper you're going to want to use in Warzone. So just like the ARs, range is the game changer on sniper rifles or marksman rifles in Warzone. That way, you don't need to worry about bullet drop when you try to shoot someone 19 feet in front of you. It gets annoying aiming at the heavens trying to hit someone just down the street. If you're not careful, your gun's gonna feel like you're hurling water balloons at people if the range is too low. And throwing water balloons at a guy with a gun is not a good idea. You could ask my friend Bobby, but you can't because he's dead now, okay? Point is, if you max out the range on your sniper rifles or your marksman rifles, they're going to be a lot more effective in Warzone because you'll be able to use them at a distance or even up close. Your marksman rifles will give you a little bit better ADS, meaning you'll be able to aim down the sights a little bit quicker. But for your long range sniper rifles like your AX50, your HDR, your Rytec, whatever it is you're using, you're going to want to max out the range so that your bullets aren't dropping, especially when you're engaging in long distance gunfights. Listen to footsteps. Using a good headset is essential in first-person shooters, and Warzone is no different. You're gonna want to listen closely so you know when an enemy is boogieing in your general direction. Now, if you're really astute, you'll be able to identify where players are without a heartbeat sensor or a UAV, which really comes in handy when players have ghosts. Now, I find this is also essential in the Gulag, as it's better to know where the enemy is before you pop out. As more often than not in the gulag, the person who shoots first doesn't get a flag sent to their house. So make sure you got a good headset and uh, you know how to use your fucking ears. Yeah, important. 
Crouching makes less sound. Now, people invest a lot of money in having the best earmuffs money can buy so that they can hear a butterfly shart from 20 feet away. So if you want to tickle some dude's taint without him being the wiser, well then, you're gonna have to get creative. Now, running makes a lot of noise in Warzone, but crouch walking doesn't. Now, it does make some sound, but you'd actually need to be a fucking dolphin to hear someone crouch walking up behind you. This can be an effective tactic if you don't want to make your presence known in a building or when you're sneaking up behind someone to execute them, right? You're not going to be like, Hey, Peter, I'm coming up behind you! You know what I mean? You're just gonna, you're just gonna do it, right? And the quieter you are, the better. Cut, shoot to travel further. Sometimes being a straight shooter will get you smacked in the front bum. Turns out flying to the side while parachuting will allow you to fly further faster without losing elevation. This comes in handy if you're downtown and you want to jump from one rooftop to another like you're the fucking Dark Knight. Also, just in case you weren't aware, if you cut your chute and glide like you're wearing a squirrel suit, you'll cover more ground faster than parachuting straight up like a wiener. However, you'll also lose altitude faster. If you jump sideways, you'll stay as high as possible while at the same time traveling decently fast. Hide behind doors leading into a building. Warzone is a first-person game, meaning most people aren't checking behind doors when they come barreling in out of the wild. So position yourself in a spot where if someone was looking forward, they might overlook you. Then, when they least expect it, run right up behind them and execute them so that the others know you're not to be trifled with. Don't be in typical places. Hiding behind a door is a great place to be because that's where people least expect you to be. This one's a big one. Don't start a fight you can't finish. This one here is a typical Call of Duty player's KY Jelly go-to. As soon as most people see enemies, they start popping off rounds like they have brain damage. Ah! Oh my god, he's right there! I'm gonna kill him! This gives away their position to other players without the added bonus of actually getting a kill. So if you can't finish your enemy, then don't take the shot. I know it's tough, but try a little self-restraint. I find the best way to restrain yourself is to picture non-killable enemies as Keanu Reeves. Because I would never hurt Keanu. Stand on vehicles if not driving. Physics is for pussies, says every person who's ever worked for Activision. Who needs them, right? Well, the good news is, is that with these Willy Wonka makeshift rules, normal dangers need not apply. For instance, it's generally frowned upon to stand on a motor vehicle when it's doing 90 off-road. But not in Warzone. No, no. In fact, it's better to stand on a vehicle, as when you go down, you'll stay on the vehicle. And the driver can take you somewhere safe to revive you. Also, sometimes when vehicles blow up and you're standing on them, you don't actually die from the explosion. Now, if you're getting downed as a passenger, though, with your seatbelt on and everything, you'll slip right out of that motherfucker, ripe for the picking. So the best thing to do when you're traveling in vehicles is actually to stand on top of the vehicles, other than the driver. I know it sounds crazy, but trust me, it's the best way to travel in vehicles. Use most wanteds to get back multiple teammates, especially early game. Now, the most wanteds are the crowns on the map, and most people know that they highlight your cheeks for everyone in the game to see. But what most people don't know is that they actually will bring back all of your fallen potato teammates if you survive for the whole three minutes. This can be a real game changer if you don't have the funds, but you know a good spot to camp and pray. Now, some good places to camp with one of these most wanted is at the top of a ladder, at the top of an elevator shaft, or in an unbreakable fortress of some sort. I don't know where you would find that, but if you can get one, you're golden. This one's huge, but pick a good operator. Operators are important in Warzone, as some operators blend into the environment, while other operators are running around in a pink thong and a bright yellow Hello Kitty backpack. What I'm saying is don't be the Hello Kitty dipshit. Use an operator that helps you blend into the world space, like with a ghillie suit or a camo that complements the world space. Don't use operators that have bright colors, as they stand out like an adult at a Jake Paul meet and greet. Use the operators that are going to be harder to spot and give yourself an advantage. The reaction time will be off, and this might give you a chance either to win the gunfight or to save your cheeks by running off in the distance, disappear into the bushes, or fade into the mist, or whatever people do. I don't know. Trains have legendary crates. I know what you guys are thinking when you look at the map. You're thinking, what's that long penis-shaped worm thingy skedaddling around the map? Well, believe it or not, 
Activision, in their infinite wisdom, added a fucking useless train to the game to bog down performance. But in order to save face and not look like a bunch of dipshits, they added crates to this bitch, and not just any crates. Legendary crates filled with all sorts of goodies. So early game, it can be lucrative to check the train. However, it can also be a hot drop. So keep that in mind. Now, if the plane is close to the train, then you're probably going to have some competition for those legendary crates. Pros and cons. Pros and cons. However, if you see that no one's going for the train, it can be a really, really good idea to go for the fucking train. It can be a quick loadout. Nice satchel. Maybe even a self-revive. Who knows? This guy's the limit. Subways are fast teleportation points. While we're on the topic of useless ship, the developers also added fast travel points to the Battle Royale in the way of a subway. Yeah, that's right. You can teleport around the map like you're in Star Trek. You just get in a subway train at a subway station, and it will take you to another subway station instantaneously. It'll fade to black, boom, you'll be there. Make sure, though, that you pick one headed in the right direction, or you're going to end up knee-deep in mustard gas with no way out but the gulag. Peak doors for an advantage. Peeking is always an advantage. It gives you the ability to really gawk at somebody before they have time to put on their panties and call the police. Well, Warzone is no different. You can actually peek doors in the game. This gives you the advantage of seeing your enemy without being fully exposed and also creates less noise when opening doors if you want to sneak up on a motherfucker. This can be uh, great for shooting, peeking, gawking, or stalking enemies in the game. Now, in order to peek a door, all you have to do is aim at it and hit the door open button, whatever that is on your given system. There are multiple bunkers that take codes rather than key cards. Now, there are a number of bunkers around the map that require uh, numbered codes to open rather than a key card. I guess Activision thought key cards were just too random. We need to reward people who know how to use Google. Those are the MLG superstars we're really looking for to play Warzone. Mm, all right. Mm, yeah, way to go, Activision. Also, to my knowledge, the numbers never change. So once you got the code for one given bunker, you're laughing all the way to the clusterfuck that is these bunkers early game. Knowing the code is one thing, actually being able to get in one of these bu bunkers is another thing. More often than not, if it's a coded bunker, it's going to have some competition. However, every now and again, there might be a coded bunker, even early game, that people don't go to. Or you might find one of these bunkers late game that haven't been opened and you'll be able to open it and get some free gear. So it's a good idea to know the codes for these bunkers. Use fully loaded as a weapon perk. Maybe the most annoying teammate in Warzone is the one kid who never has any fucking ammo. He's just there sitting next to you playing go fish with ammunition. You got any sniper bullets? No? How about pistol ammo? You got any pistol ammo? Listen, I'll suck your dick for a little uh, AR ammo, bro. Don't be that guy. Put fully loaded on your gun perks to get a loaded weapon with max ammo. More often than not, the extra attachment won't be a game changer, but being ammo-less in a gunfight will be. Use part of your self-revive to get picked up quicker. Self-revives are dumb as shit. It's like, hey, I got shot in the face. Just give me a second while I rub some dirt on it and I'll be good to go. But if they are in the game, you might as well utilize them. When you get down with a self-revive, Using it right away, even if a teammate can get you up, is a good idea. That way, when they do scoop you, it'll be really fast, almost instantaneous. You can also use self-revives to stall the time it takes to bleed out. In case your teammate wants to pick you up so you don't waste the self-revive, but isn't that close. If you use three UAVs at once, you'll get an advanced UAV. Now, UAVs are great in Warzone. It lets you know what enemies are poking around in your general vicinity. But why not step it up a notch, you know? Really expose those motherfuckers. If you use three UAVs at once, you'll do just that by getting an advanced UAV. This will show a map-wide range of your enemies as well as a constant feed and direction of your enemies. So you'll be able to sneak right up behind them and blow their butt cheeks apart, or you'll be able to avoid specific groups if you're all alone. Use precision airstrikes to finish enemies that are down from far away. Now, there's nothing more annoying than getting a sweet headshot from a thousand meters out, only to have that pussy hide behind a tiny box or wall while he's getting rezzed. Well, start packing precision airstrikes when you're sniping. That way, when you down an enemy, they'll be truly fucked. You just aim it right on there, and they shouldn't have enough time to get up before that motherfucker blasts them sky high. 
drop all ammo or plates before picking up a munitions or armor box. Ammo is one of those things in Warzone that you can carry like 400 pounds of stuff and still feel like you don't have enough. So before you pick up a munitions box, be sure to drop your excess ammo. That way, you'll have a temporary stash. You can refill off until you move spots. This is a good idea with armor boxes as well. So if you find you're going to be in a stationary position for a little bit, then when you put down that munitions box or that armor box, make sure to drop your excess armor or ammo. Then you can just keep coming back to that stuff if you're, if you're getting hit or you're running out of ammo or you're shooting at people or whatever it is, and it can give you sort of like that extra supply. It's just nice to have that little stash, you know? When you move away, obviously it's not going to follow you, but it's nice to have it while you're there. Mark enemies before you shoot. Knowing where enemies are is important. You don't want villains sneaking up on you like Bill Cosby at a kegger, do you? So, when you see an enemy, before you shoot, make sure to mark them so if you miss, your teammates can murder the fuck out of them. It's a simple concept, but it's really, really important. Also, if you live ping enemies, it will also follow them through houses or behind houses and places where you can't normally see them. So, it will make it easier for you to predict where they might be coming out. There are multiple bunkers on the map that take key cards. So before we talked about bunkers that take codes that, for the most part, never change. But there's also key cards. Random key cards can be found throughout the map, usually red key cards. And these key cards can apply to several different bunkers throughout the map. Bunkers are like these great locations stuffed to the fucking rafters with money and loot. So it can be a really good idea to take advantage of them when you have a chance. If you find one of these key cards, there's a good chance that there's a bunker nearby that people don't have a key card for. So if you find one of these key cards, then just beeline to the closest bunker and put all that goodness inside of you, okay? Just put all the goodness inside of you. But be cautious though, when you do open one of these bunkers, other people who are aware of these bunkers might know that you're doing it and they might set up a trap for when you come out so they can take all of your goodies. Recons will tell you where the circle is going to be and possibly where it's gonna end. Being in the circle is huge in Warzone, mainly because there's always some Neanderthals on the outskirts more concerned with getting a kill than winning the game. So that they can prove to everyone in Little League practice, they're not a loser. The point is, these dipshits want kills, not wins. And they'll park their cheeks in a bush outside the circle to get them. So it's better to get a good spot inside the circle early on. If you do recons, you can actually find out where the circle is going to go next. If you do enough of them, you can find out where the very last circle is going to be. Note that there are several normal circles, and then after that, the circle moves as it gets smaller. It does this a few times, then the very last circle shrinks to nothing. So the more of these recons you get, the more likely you'll know where that very last circle is going to be. Now, the downside of using a recon is it's going to highlight you for everyone on the map. And it tells people who are close by that someone's doing a recon close by. And this big yellow fucking light shoots up into the air and says, Hey! I'm over here! If you want to kill someone, please kill me and my friends! That's what that light says to people, okay? So if you're going to do recons, you need to know that. You need to be prepared for a fight. And you're going to want to do a decent amount of recons if you're doing recons in general. You don't just want to know where the next circle is. Idealistically, you want to know where the last circle is going to be. Land with no contracts to avoid hotspots in the beginning. Now, contracts are ubiquitous in Warzone, and Call of Duty players get wet in the panties just thinking about completing some contracts. So the best way to avoid the masses off the hop and get some gear before you get ganked is to land where there are no contracts. Just look for a group of buildings that doesn't have shit around them. Chances are, it'll have nobody else there. Just like my last three birthday parties at the YMCA. Yeah, nobody showed up. What's that all about? Now, if you want to land where there's other people, best place to land is where there are scavengers. Scavengers are hot spots. You land where there's a scavenger, chances are another team's going to be landing there too. You're going to have to fight over it. Anytime you down an enemy, push them if they're close enough. Now, the worst part about Warzone is there's all these enemies that will fight back and stop you from winning the game. So if you have a chance to eliminate someone, it's best to take advantage, especially when another team is at a disadvantage. So when you down an enemy, it can be a good idea to rush because one or more enemies are going to be out of the fight momentarily. It's like my track coach used to always yell at us from the rafters. Kick them when they're down, kids! Kick them when they're down! 
Point is, is if they have self-revives, they can use those, but they're still out of the fight. Or if they don't have a self-revive, someone else from their team has to rush over and pick them up. Which means if your team is whole, you're going to be in an advantage against a team that had a recently downed comrade. Even if they get them up before you get there, that recently downed comrade isn't going to have any plates on, and he's going to be easily downed again. Don't stay close to teammates in buildings. Split up. Being too close to people is great when you're sharing feelings or trying to establish dominance over the betas, but when it comes to being in a building in Warzone, it's better to split up, mainly because of explosives and the element of surprise. Now, if you and your whole team are hiding in the shitter when an enemy squad breaches the building, it's going to be pretty easy to mow down your whole situation. However, if you're all in different spots, it'll confuse the fuck out of most Call of Duty players, especially the ones that don't know what the fuck is going on half the time. So if you're downstairs and another teammate's upstairs and there's one teammate outside the building, this can be really confusing and difficult to deal with. And that element of surprise is going to give you guys the advantage, especially if a team's trying to rush you and they think you're all in one specific location. Now this one is one I actually didn't know about for the longest time, but if you hold crouch, you can actually slide down ladders. This can be great, especially if you're in one of those firehouses, you know, like when you go up, up into the tower, like you're fucking like your Rapunzel from Tangled, right? It can be hard to get out of those towers unless you jump out the window. But if you get onto the ladder and you hold the crouch button, you can slide down really quickly. This can be great to get down ladders if you're being shot at or whatever it is without actually having to jump off the ladder and parachute or not parachute and die. So it's one of those things, it's one of those tips that it definitely comes in handy if you're starting to get shot while you're on a ladder or if you have to get down a ladder really quickly. You can put deployable shields at the top of ladders and it prevents people from climbing up those ladders. This is something that comes in handy, especially if you're camping on the top of a roof or a building or whatever it is that only has one ladder or one way up. So if you put a deployable shield up there, then they might down you and try to come up after you. And as soon as they hit the deployable shield, they're going to fall off. They can't grab onto the ladder again once they hit the deployable shield. They're going to fall all the way to their death or, or all the way to get downed and then their teammate's going to have to pick them up. So it can be a great little surprise for people when they're trying to sneak up behind you. It will also down you though. So if you put a deployable shield and then you go down and then try to come back up, it'll down you as well. So keep that in mind. You can actually jump in the airport tower from the roof of the airport tower. I see kids try to do this all the time and they fumble and fall and it's just pathetic. It's pathetic. I feel bad for them. I really do in my heart of hearts. All you have to do, it's really simple. You just stand on the top rail, point it towards the tower, and then jump off backwards and continue to tap the parachute button. As you do that, your parachute will pull and you'll be able to fly in real nice. This way you can get the jump on someone who's camping the elevator, or if you just want to jump in on some kids and give them a little surprise. Hello, it's me. <laughs> it's just a nice little neat little trick. Thanks again for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to bitch slap that subscribe button like it's three weeks behind on your rent. <coughs> bitch! Where's the money, bitch? Where's the money? Where is it? Also, go ahead and hit that bell icon, too, because apparently YouTube thought there should be extra steps. Why not, right? I'd like to subscribe, but first I have to click this and this and do this. Oh, it needs an email. All right, and this. Okay, fuck. Just tell me when he's uploading. Fuck! Once you do all that, if you're lucky, at the stroke of midnight, a tiny little average baiter's fairy might come and tickle your butthole. Now, I hope to see you all again next time, and remember to keep on average baiting, baby.